<laughs> Lahoman Son of Snat, Tim Ballou, Chairman for the Lummi Nation. Uh, top responsibility uh, for uh, the Council is protecting the treaty rights for the Lummi people. Uh, the treaty rights have definitely shaped uh, this great land of ours, the United States, the state of Washington, and the, uh, the ancestral territories that we come from. And a, a big part of that is our first foods, the, the, uh, the things that we go out and harvest and bring to the table. And a key staple for our people since uh, time immemorial were uh, shellfish. Our elders would say that when the tide, tide is out, the table is set. And unfortunately, those words haven't rung true uh, for the, this last few years and to the decade of uh, mid-90s through the early 2000s. We could see the, the progression going back up of, uh, of a fecal coliform contaminating Portage Bay. And unfortunately, it's uh, reached the level and stayed at the level that uh, they've been closed for the last uh, two to three years. And it's um, a, a great problem that it's, it's, it's a terrible problem that needs to be addressed. Rich Apple, and uh, I operate and work on uh, Apple Brothers Dairy, which is part of Apple Farms. Portage Bay is at the outflow of the Nooksack River in the bay in Bellingham, and it's a shellfish bed out there. And uh, those shellfish beds remain open if the water quality is good enough to keep them open and is tested regularly. And there was a period of time where uh, the dairies were a major contributing factor to the closure of those beds. And, uh, and then there was the Dairy Nutrient Management Act came into play and farms uh, came under a new level of scrutiny and, um, and there was more awareness, I think, too, just of uh, pollution in general and uh, dairy pollution. And I think that uh, that changed the game and water quality improved significantly over a number of years. And uh, there was a uh, you know, big celebration when those shellfish beds were opened again and, and we thought that we were on our way. I don't think we thought that that would reoccur. And then in the last couple of years, uh, starting in about 2014, we started seeing the, the, the bacterial counts rise in Portage Bay. If water quality falls below a certain point, they're not gonna be shellfish beds. And as farmers, I think we've, we can really, I think, relate to the tribe uh, as well as anybody in that if somebody told me that I couldn't farm half of my land, I wouldn't be very happy either. We definitely did know that it had to be uh, some sort of conversation uh, between the agricultural community um, and, and, and the tribe. And uh, you know, one uh, potential and probably the, um, a potential action could have been legal action. Um, it definitely could have been a, um, you know, some sort of protracted litigation between the tribe and the agricultural community. Uh, they were they were intending on suing some of the dairy farmers, and uh, at that point, uh, we said we think there's a better way, and uh, and we started having conversations with them. And there was a point where we kind of hit a stalemate, and uh, and then um, uh, Chairman Tim Ballou, uh suggested a partnership <clears throat> that we would have a partnership, and that we would uh, we would we would work together. And so that was, I think, uh, from my perspective, it was uh, bold for him to do that. I think it was the right thing to do. And uh, at that point, we kind of designated four farmers and four Lummi business council members to uh, make, form um, a, 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 an eight person group that would then uh, start to work out what would that partnership look like. I look at the Portage Bay Partnership as a commitment on both sides to identifying uh, sources of uh, contamination and uh, applying best practices to, to changes. And those would be tailored to each uh, facility, to each, each signatory, and um, really not uh, pointing blame at any of the signatories, but it's really uh, everybody taking, uh, taking a hard look at what could be improved, what could be done uh, to address the bigger issue of water contamination. 
the issues were hard and, and things needed to be talked about. But relationally, I think it was uh, very good. And uh, I think it was, for the most part, we, we did it respectfully. And, um, you know, we, we didn't, it was, not, it was not hard meetings to go to. I think uh, we, we relationally got along well. It's a, a community approach to a community problem. And uh, we're, we're grateful that we had, uh, um, you know, neighbors who were willing to sit down and figure this out with us. And I think it in turn, it'll improve the water quality for everybody.